Yeah, by one time we surrounded about three German divisions. We couldn't get out and they couldn't do to get in. But funny, some of them had fought their way into us, freed us. Hi, this is Bruce Lindsay working with Liz Gallo on our continuing project to document the stories of veterans. Today we are with 100-year-old veteran Chet Williams. Chet served in the Army during World War II in the European theater. Chet was the recipient of two Purple Hearts and a Bronze Star. Okay, we're ready to start here with Chet Williams. And what we're going to do today is we're going to ask you some questions and talk to you about your experiences during and before um, World War II. Um, to start off with, you were, you were a lifelong resident of this area, is that correct? He's actually born in Little Cove, Sylvan, yep. up above Mercedesburg. Okay. It's a little town about three or four houses. Okay. And uh, then a, his mother and dad died when he was a young age. He went to live with his aunt and uncle in the Little Cove. Okay. Jim, Mary, and Katie Connor. And then they moved down to Shady Grove on Stall Road, and he went to work driving a milk truck down there, for a man down there in far the fields. That's how I met my mother. So, how old were you when World War II broke out? Do you remember? Eighteen. Eighteen. And then then and then uh, I got a letter. I can see him one day. So I had to cut the whole milk. Uh, guy had about, when someone told about three trucks down in West Virginia, whole milk. In the wintertime, there were two. They like all the winter down. But, uh, I had to quit the whole milk and go to the army. He, the boys could have kept me out. I said, oh, my friend is going, I'm going to go to you. So we left. Where did you go to basic training? Oh, well, I went to Harrisburg on in the third of March for examination. I left there. Went to Fort Meade on our twelfth awards, got my outfit and everything, and sent me down to Fort Jackson and down there for basic. He got me about, I remember about 13 weeks, I think that's what it was. And up there, Tennessee maneuvers. I lived there with the Camp Atterbury in the Atlanta. I lived there and been home for Burlow. Then I got in the... Oh, I never turned off the ship. Camp down in Virginia. I can't believe it. Then I came back, I enjoyed it. They don't know all. They went to New Jersey. Well, yes, that's where I shipped out at. Well, uh, uh, yeah. Did you? So you, you took a ship over to Europe? Huh? You, you went, went to Europe on a ship? And we went over to Conroy, and they had a convoy up, and we went on inside to get the corners. I went to England. I left England, went to France. And then 
In France, Germany, Netherlands, Holland, Belgium, Singapore, and Marquis. Yeah, that's all of them. So you were with the 79th Infantry Division, is that correct? 79th Infantry Division? Yeah. Were you in, was your occupation infantry? You were an infantry soldier? I'm that. Your, your, were you a um, rifleman? Yeah, I had machine gun in the States. But I went over as a replacement. They put me the rifle school, and I'm glad they did. The machine gun is all right, first thing. The other rifleman. Yeah. October 2nd, he had got hit the first time. They did the journey the second time. Yeah, it was the in the name of the Battle of the Moon, it means the bad. I think a lot of battles were just the bad ones, that was. Well, it happened, there's a new outfit over there, and it wasn't used to combat. I do not think I'm tired of them. Yeah, I know, something. So you, were you in Europe until the war was over? I forget where we were and it ended. I mean, we crossed the line with us. That's our door. I can entirely call that a neutral door. Dusseldorf? Neutral door. That's town. Okay. We went and did that we crossed the line. Then I wanted to have to remember. We were 18 months over there. Yeah. What was it like when you came back after the war? Well, coming out of the war back in the citizenship <laughs> again is no different. I don't know, it's just kind of different. But you, somebody done something to you, you felt like killing them. But uh, my girlfriend, my wife, well, she ended up being my wife. She helped me straighten up my leg a bit. Yeah. When I first came back, she made, every time somebody done something, I was ready to bow into them. But I kind of would Man, you can just play your life. You got my mind. That's when they come along. They just showed up, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it did that, did. So we were, we were talking about how you were active in the American Legion for many years. You were in the American Legion for many years. Well, I didn't, I kind of got screwed up. When I came home, the guy tied me up that way more. Almost as soon as I got home. I don't know how many years I did down there, but anyhow, when I went more, came to Green Castle, don't ask me why, but I dropped a couple of years. And then uh, we doing it here, and now I'm wondering if I pay all I skipped in a couple of years, but you might continue on to, but I haven't told anybody. I don't know, 
And I will be in between when I be doing continue. How to talk to somebody. But I'm down the road. Oh, you got that. Huh? Tell him about that. Over. What do you have here? That one's been worn a little bit. That's a silver dollar. I've traveled a lot of miles. Tell them how you got it. I got it in them. And it was in and that's my birthday. So I gave him a dollar for it. Uh, Trade over to the war, had him in shoes and everywhere else. And then I created it after I got it, so I went to try and change. That's how I got smoothed. Where, where did you have it? How did it get smooth? And it's changed. He you know, you carried it with you. He's carried it up to the last two years. Wow. Since 1945 or 44, 43 when he went down. And time was on the mound. Why, why, why did he keep it in his shoes? Because the case, who was it? The Russians? Germans. Germans. In case the Germans captured him, they would never look in the shoes for it. <laughs> He had many of us here, but everywhere else. Kind of hard. What about the, uh, what about the, uh, German that came out of the front porch? Huh? What about that German that came out on the front porch? You might not want to report it. here. Well, that's oh. okay. <laughs> She's heard it. And yeah. Up behind his house. Hiding on his steps. I got my steps went up. And then Julie came out of the back door. And you know, then he turned to the right. He was right and left and he peed on me. And then there would have been trouble. What the hell? But he, you know, he went back in. He went right through that in the back for When we went in, they couldn't find him. My mom went in at the front door. Uh, yeah, Peter went the other way and been in trouble there. He might not go back in the house. But I'm thankful he turned to the right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. He got to be a squad leader in charge of 11 men. And, uh,. <clears throat> Of course, he was always getting new replacements and coming in. And one time he said they were, it was raining. I don't know if he was in the hedgerows, they called them. And it was raining so bad that, I don't know, I guess the, that he was hiding in the grass. He said the Germans went by that close, he could rest out and grab them. I shot Fleur. Oh, I mean, my drums went past me. Yeah. I <clears throat> see the flares. I hit the ground. And first I shot me down. Yeah. I hit the ground. I don't know, I thought I was dead. I didn't see me enough, but this is about, oh, when I touched that door back here, but somewhere around, something like that, they went walking on by. I went out to the, well, I laid on a landmine. I took this land mine out there to set up, and I thought, now they captured me, I'm going to pull the plug. But they went on, dragged it up, set my mind, got back with the outfit. First place, I didn't tell it to me on the wrong side of the woods. That was his fault. I was dreaming on the other side. But they have a man to when men captured me, I think I had to pull the plug. What 
about? You went in a week later after the Battle of the Balls, right? You went in with, somehow you got tied in with Patton. And the Patton was one, of course, had the tank. Mm -hmm. And they they jumped on the tanks to take the ride in wherever to the Balls, the Battle of the Balls, I guess, and wherever they going. He said that night they could hardly see if the, the well or the diesel fumes from them tanks. I guess they weren't used to it, had their eyes burning. You rode in on the on the tanks then? Yeah, we heard the tanks keep up. You're going too fast. I guess don't take long to a foxhole whenever you're shooting at you. No, no, right pretty fast. Then that would be so, but the don't clean. <laughs> so it was one of that, maybe about that long. You just picked it up and took the hand on the shoulder, stood, and you just it, bend it down, turn it in the pick. Then you had two shoulders, and you had a pick, and one. Yeah, had quite experience. But I got told. So you, you got promoted to sergeant, correct? And then you were became a squad leader? Yeah, and well no one thought the staff sergeant, that was just the back sergeant. But if I have him, then you take over. And take over the men. But you know, I never know when this is going to go or that's going to go. Did you ever have to stay, step up and take over the platoon sergeant role? Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. the sergeant came up to me one time, wondering where my fuel the fire was. I said, buddy, it's all around you. You're not by the seats. <laughs> yeah. So he didn't stop the folks who was where we was at. He had to be back into town. Well, then the honey, they came into town. I said, now, see what you got? And what are you going to do? I just we get them out. I said, I'm not helping. You don't have to mend here, you can get them out. I'm going to take my men back here and take their rest. We had a whole enough time to get that. But if he stayed up in the fox holes where we was at, it would have been in trouble. But <laughs> it wasn't the worst field of fireworks. I said, but it's all around you over there. Yeah. You know what? What'd you do to your rifle? What did you do to your rifle? I cut diamonds in it. He was sitting there, I guess, one night on guard. He, he checkered the stock. The only boy and I cut a big diamond. They cut little diamonds in between there. The back of the stock, the little plate uh, come down. I cut diamonds in there. The dead said one day, Who did that? I did. Me and back in the state, I'm a court marshal. I said, I'm not in the state. <laughs> yeah. Any other memories you have of the uh, time that you were in Europe that you want to talk about? Any other, any other stories of the time you were in Europe that you want to talk about? Well, I'm not, I'm not in, I'm not allowed in New York. 
You want to talk about that? That's always a big joke. He's not allowed in New York. <laughs> Whatever what happened think? last night in New York before he went overseas, he must have gotten a fight with some people and the MPs got him and told him to leave New York and don't ever come back. The MPs have been pretty close. And I told you I let me know. <laughs> Uh, I think he's trying to get my bill for Yeah. That guy is a friend of mine wanted to keep it. I knew what he was going to do. Get the thing and take off. So he wouldn't let me loom. And he finally got tired of the best him one. And then B got in there. Uh, so my buddy had a Town, no to town. Says, oh, don't come out. I'm in New York since. <laughs> That's a couple of years. I think they might let you in now, but maybe you better not take know. a chance. They might. <laughs> so when when you came back here, obviously you you worked again. At, did you go back to the mill? Huh? When you came back from the war, did you go back to the truck? Route? Not right away. I got married. I got another woman and another there. <laughs> That's the way you say it. <laughs> we love you, Mom's letter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got married and worked on my farm. I got maybe a year or so. I bought a milk truck, hold milk and coal for I get I had them trucks for twenty some years. Hold milk and coal. They said you got discharged on the third of December of nineteen forty five. And you got married on the twenty twenty second. Twenty second of December nineteen forty five. So he's only twenty days home. We, we we talked about your time in the American Legion, but you also were a volunteer for the fire department for Greencastle, is it? They say you're still active on the rolls. Is that true? You must be one of the record holders. Huh? You're still, still active on the fire department rolls. No, no. I mean, he's not active, but he's on the rolls. On the rolls, right. For his 100th birthday, every with every piece in the fire hall lined up the road back here. And kept, we had him outside and came by here and blowed their sirens and their horns and all right around the corner here at the fire hall. Nice. To celebrate his birthday. When he came home before he went to the war, came home on furlough, mm -hmm. who was the man that gave you these car keys? Oh, a friend of mine, Pete Merlot. This is yeah. how they treated the soldiers, you know, in World War II. They, he had the keys to his car, his full tank of gas. That was, was half fun. Think that we said? Is that right, uh, 35 Chevy? 36? Yeah, 35 or 36 Chevy. And fill up, give me a key. I'm going to have a good time. What about the train? Well, was that in Harrisburg? I don't know. You were coming to Wayne's Bar or someplace. I said, that train going to Greencastle. He said, yeah. He said, that's where I want to get off at. How much different me is if I'm paying to get off Greencastle? I'll check on something like that. He came back and said, he's off from Greencastle. I may have talked to you, wait on you. Okay. So I don't know who made the difference. But anyhow, I got to Greencastle. He had a taxi come up. One of my guys wanted to go to Wayne Bowl. I said, yeah. 
and you did. I'm here to pay the difference. I got probably a trip over the train and bus or the taxi. Three. I met the wind boy anyhow. Yeah. Well, how was the ship ride home from? How was your ship coming home from overseas after the war? You gonna get me on another one? <laughs> Man, we hit a storm. I'm telling you, I didn't know a moon could flop around like that. No, 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 a small moon. And a troop ship. Man, that thing flopped right up there, not even in the field. They had to shut the moon off. When they come up out of the water, that thing just, oh, and it shook. It said it took 80 miles off the course. Then we had to get back on that. We can get into Boston and send the front end and back on. That's what we were told. I don't know what it did. That's like a golf and that thing. Excuse me, lady. <laughs> uh, had me on boots in. I told him about the wooden bullet. Maybe you want to tell it. So, I told him about that wooden bullet. Maybe you want to tell him while it's on the camera. Oh. Because some people don't believe they use German. it. German. They must run out of lead. The big wooden bullets. And, uh, I said it was one of them. They got it. I guess up there in that board. Where did it hit you at? Huh? Where did it hit you? It's just somewhere. He said, you're lucky it was wood. Yeah. We wouldn't be telling the story today. It wasn't one of his Purple Hearts, then, was it? No. Was it, is the shrapnel up there? Yeah, it's the shrapnel. Swimmed up on that board somewhere. Took it out of the bullets up there, but that's, that's not what he got a Purple Heart for. Right. He got the Purple Heart for the shrapnel wounds. The two Purple Hearts. He said he got the one on January the 18th. You got the first Purple Heart on January the 18th, 1944. Purple Heart your mother's birthday. Well, that was, okay, October the 2nd, 1944. Uh, 19th of January, the 2nd. Yeah. So that must have been during the Bulge campaign. Uh, it must have been after the Battle of the Bulge, the, the January incident. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it burned me up. and brain got battled with boards up so much. Well, the other battle was always just as bad as I was. One day down there, they set a new outfit in there and wasn't used to combat. But the other battle was always just as bad as I was, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I remember one time we surrounded by three German divisions. We couldn't get out and they couldn't do no way to get in. But funny, some of them fit far away into us, freed us. But uh, I think what happened, they had a new outfit and we need to go back. It's telling you about how they were pinned in for 11 days. The regiment of the 315th Infantry of the 79th Infantry Division, supported by small units of the Tank Destroyer Battalion, how they were pinned in, and they had the nearly half of the men in the regiment are casualties. But the battle, they cracked the Germans' 21st Fraser Division, the 25th Fraser Grenadier Division, and the entire regiment of the 7th Paratrooper. Parachute division. Anyway, they just said how they had to fight their way out. Mm -hmm. It was pent in for 11 days. I imagine any any battle where they're shooting at is big enough. Right? right. That's what he always says. You know. Did you keep in touch with any of the your friends from the service after the war? Yeah, I mean, you and me, I'm not seem like the old. Well, you were the, 
you were the young buck sergeant, they said. I remember the guys talking about that. And he just so happens I picked his book up. He kept a record of the his men in his unit and their service number <laughs> while he was their sergeant. And some of them came here to visit, and some of them he went to visit them. Yeah, quite a life. So you've learned a lot. You've seen a lot. What would you say to other people about life advice or? Well, be thankful we got this country to live in. They're really communists and a lot different. You know what they say. You can't go out and do what you want to do. So I'd say we got a pretty nice country, for as I'm concerned. I'd hate to live under their rules. If you didn't live under their rules, you probably got to do that. If you didn't camp or how, go on. I don't know how they treat people like they did. But they did it, you know, and The people back here in the States, back then you had gas ration stamps. And some of them would save their gas, gas ration stamps to give to the soldiers when they would come home and leave. So World War II veterans were treated better than... Vietnam vets when they came home. Yeah. Luckily, I came home at midnight. I landed in the States at midnight. So I didn't get to see all that stuff going on out in California. I was going before daybreak, coming back home. Just as well. Yeah. It's a whole other story. Well, do you all have any other stories, or do you have any other thing that you'd like to share with us? Tobacco story in Tennessee. Chewing tobacco. How your mouth got dry. Oh, I mean, that guy gave me a tube. Yeah, we're doing this hike. <clears throat> and the machine gunner. And the guy right behind me, assistant. So I cranked one piece, he cranked the other piece. And he won't know he didn't bother. I said, ain't you toasted? No. I said, you can go out and spit dust. My mom plugged his tobacco at me and said, take no that. He said, no toys and spit that every now and then. Oh, my well, left up every song. And then they picked me up and cleared me. I didn't go around the view. I never heard of it. But anyhow, I turned to a piece. Oh man, that was so. But I finally made it. So after that, I didn't get a bag of meat stuff. They knew me back in the hand. I didn't think that long. But I married me. Oh, yeah, he had been that. That's how I got the jewel in the owner. Yep. A lot of tales. Many friends. I used to write the 